Hello, my name's Ben Lee. I'm a researcher working at Crest, based at Lancaster University. So over the last year I've been working on a small project called Informal Counter Messaging. Counter messages are designed to challenge, contradict or sometimes ridicule extremist narratives. When governments have tried to do counter messaging in the past, they've often been criticised as being not credible. Sometimes narratives are seen as being too preachy or governments are seen as pushing propaganda. To get around this, there's been attempts to try and encourage grassroots groups to speak out, but even then there can be suspicion over the motivations of people who work with the government or some larger organisations. Sometimes this is described as scholars for dollars. So we tend to think of counter-messaging as something done by governments and slick PR agencies. But if you think about it, criticising extremist narratives is something that society already does very well. If you look online, you can see there is literally masses of counter-messaging content produced by creators with no ties to the government or formal CVE organisations. So what I'm interested in is understanding the experience of those creators. I've spoken to people who run Facebook discussion pages, make parody YouTube videos and are active through Twitter accounts. I've also spoken to creators who are active both against the far right and Islamist extremism. At this point, my findings are preliminary, but so far my research has shown that these people make content for a whole host of reasons. Some of those are for ideological reasons, sometimes it's for financial gain, and sometimes it's just because people enjoy it. My work also suggests that there may be an equilibrium between extremism and counter-messaging. The more attention an extremist message gets, the more likely creators will post content opposing it. Lastly, while some creators welcome the opportunity for closer collaboration, others worry about their own credibility and how they can control the material they produce. Overall, my work shows that while we tend to focus on formal approaches to counter-messaging delivered by government and associated organisations, we can't really understand counter-messaging without considering the informal creators as well. But if we want to make better use of this content, we may have some way to go. If you'd like to read more about my work, please visit the Crest website at www.crestresearch.ac.uk.